I am to share some reflections or some words with you on account of what we in this world in general and we Muslims in particular are experiencing of tremendous, momentous upheavals and changes at all levels of the spectra of life. In doing so, I am to share with you some excerpts of what Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam had told us because what is happening in the world and to us Muslims also specifically Allah has known it for eternity Allah has willed it for eternity before he created us before he created anything his knowledge has never changed subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing happens in existence not only on earth manifest or subtle or hidden except that it is with his will and in his infinite eternal knowledge ما شاء الله كان وما لم يشاء لم يكن what Allah wills what he wills to be will be what he will not to be will not be سبحانه وتعالى ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها It's a very uh, powerful ayah that when we read and we ponder, it is <coughs> tremendously healing. Because Allah tells us whatever befalls you or happens or occurs on this earth of any event, major or minor, personal or collective, mental, spiritual, emotional, physical, economic, political, military, nothing occurs even when a leaf falls from a tree. Nothing occurs except that it is in his knowledge before he had created earth itself and before that event itself was created. من قبل أن نبرأها أي من قبل أن نبرأ المصيبة أو من قبل أن نبرأ الأرض When we know this as alhamdulillah as muslimun as mu'minun it brings solace to us we're not living in a random world there is no random process in the divine scale random is our perception of things when we are unable to understand something exactly we say it is random and we develop a concept of random processes simply to explain to at practical levels what we need practically but nothing is random nothing that's number one and therefore in consequence to that rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam
Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala aleyhi ve alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem as many ulama of hadith have related that on occasions more than one occasion that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed his companions from morning till late afternoon with breaks only for salah to tell them all what will be in the future. And this hadith related by many companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum wa arba. And some have remembered details of the Sahaba, some, some did not, as the texts also teach us. So that's why we have sometimes um, portions of what he وسلم, said on one full occasion. One remembered one part, another remembered a second part, a third part, one remembered a few parts together. In that which he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the following. This hadith related by Imam al-Tabarani and al-Bazzar and others. He said, Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, سَتَرَوْنَ قَبْلَ أَن تَقُومَ السَّاعَةِ أَشْيَاءَ سَتُنْكِرُونَهَا عِظَامًا تَقُولُونَ هَلْ كُنَّا حُدِّثْنَا بهذا فإذا رأيتم ذلك فاذكروا الله تعالى واعلموا أنها أوائل الساعة end of quote this hadith says that you will witness before the coming of the hour. So the hour, i.e. the end of the world as we know it. Some call it in common American parlance and Christian parlance, and the end of times. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will witness things before the coming of the hour that are momentous which you will wonder about. Tunkiruna, what is going on? What is going on? And some things, Tunkiruna, بمعنى أيضا لا تستسيغونها لا تناسب ليست مستحسنة of the things that we will not approve of even and momentous ones, to the extent that there is so much of that that you would say, and look at this prophecy of Rasulullah in the future, he's speaking of the future before the coming of the hour, that you will say, you will say, did we ever, were we ever taught or told about these things to happen, i.e. by Rasulullah. Should I pause here for a moment? Did it happen to you? Did you ever ask the questions as whenever, especially the parents and the adults and those who are interested in information collecting and data processing? This is incredible. Did Rasulullah tell us about something like this? Just to... It's a means for us to find some solace, find some peace. Wallahi qultuha kada marra. Wallahi qultuha fi nafsi kada marra. I myself had asked myself before I knew the hadith, much longer before I knew the hadith, I have asked myself that question. And Rasulullah said, of his prophecies of the future is even what you will say privately. For me, this is of the most powerful of the mu'jizat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in terms of al ikhbar bima sayyukum. To the extent that he tells us, 
you will say this. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا رسول الله. أي نعم. Another similar hadith related by Imam Ahmad in his Muslim and Imam Ibn Hibban in his Sahih. When he spoke to Muslim in a long hadith and he spoke of these signs of the coming of the Antichrist, the Dajjal. And at the end he says, وَلَنْ يَكُونَ ذَلِكَ حَتَّى تَرَوْا أُمُورًا يتفاقم شأنها في نفوسكم وتساءلون بينكم هل كان نبيكم ذكر لكم من هذكرا لا إله إلا الله end of quote he said صلى الله عليه وسلم the signs that he spoke about of the Dajjal and he says these all of those signs will not occur until you will witness, again, like previous hadith, you will witness events, umoran. You will witness events that you will find those in you overwhelming, unbearable, incredible, too much. You're unable to deal with it calmly and peacefully and uh, securely. It generates restlessness, very strange, powerful feelings. And you will ask one another, did your Nabi, this one says it literally, did your Nabi وسلم, ever mention anything about I really have to pause here because I don't know about you. But for me, this is this says all. Everything that is happening is said here in general terms. The wars, the injustices, the oppressions, the excesses, <clears throat> the ruthlessness, the arrogance. The, the abuse of power, the abuse of wealth, the immoralities, the decadence, the scientific power and the technological power, all of that is included in these statements. And yet, on other occasions, he spoke of even specifics. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Now listen to this one. And in a similar text, and at the end of it, he says, and these things will not happen. As you wish, I, I don't know. Oh, please just let me know. Perhaps uh, we can bring the table closer. This is as much as I can do. The hour will not come, he says, and these signs will not come حتى تزول جبال عن مراتبها أو في رواية عن أماكنها and until mountains are removed from their locations. Allah Akbar. Now with the huge tools that we have, Mountains are removed, literally, literally, for mining and for building roads and for building, what is it, tunnels 
And I don't know whether you know of Jabal Umar, the mountain of Sayyidina Umar in Mecca, around the Kaaba, when I first saw it, when before all these changes in year, the year 2000, the mountain was there. Nothing on it. It's gone. It's gone. It's all now high rises. Says Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi sallallahu wa sallam. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan Rasulullah. Before I go on on this, I'd like simply to make an inflection and to address in a similar uh, in the similar theme what he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam before the coming of the hour of things to happen something in this case now more specific and individual to us as muslims and it is religious and about faith and about ibadah and about worship and about obedience of allah azza wa jal and about what will happen to this deen of what he said, I'm just being selective here. There is there are hundreds of texts. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of what he said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Awalu ma yurfa'u min dinikum al-amana. Aw awalu ma tafqiduna min dinikum al-amana. وفي رواية أول ما يرفع من دينكم الحياء والأمانة وآخر ما يبقى من دينكم الصلاة ولا يصلين أقوام لا خلاق لهم وفي رواية وسيصلي أقوام لا دين لهم وفي رواية لا إيمان لهم بهذه الثلاث ألفاظ جاء الحديث على الأقل as far as I know لا دين لهم أو لا خلاق لهم أو لا أو لا إيمان لهم said he صلى الله عليه وسلم of the signs of the hour before the coming of the hour he said you will lose of your faith you will lose of your deed i.e. you will give up Willingly. He says, of your deen, of your faith, of Islam, he said, of the first thing that shall be lifted, in one riwayah says, is al-haya. Well, amana. Haya. The more we live, the more we are uh, subjected to the changes in this world, the more this particular trait and character is lost. Should I translate haya? Every Muslim and Muslim, I suppose, knows haya. And we must. Because there is no Islam without haya. There is no Islam actually without haya. Because Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, fi ma sahaan. الإيمان والحياء قرنا جميعا إذا رفع أحدهما رفع الآخر وقال صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم إن لكل دين خلقا وإن خلق الإسلام الحياء سيده صلى الله عليه وسلم حياء and Iman, and belief, and faith. Qurina jami'an, they are joined together. If one of them is lifted, the other is lifted. Haya. He says, every deen has its defining characteristic, or defining character, khuluq. And the defining character of Islam is haya.
That's why he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of what we inherited of the wisdom of those who were before us, إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاصْنَعْ مَا شِئْتِ That if you lose haya, then do what you want to do. Freedom of the self. That is equivalent to no haya. Freedom of the self. That's is equivalent to no haya. Fasna ma shi'at. When you don't have haya, then you are free to do what your nafs wants to do. That's what it means. And the world brags about freedom of the self. And yet the self is what was meant to be disciplined, to be tamed, to be controlled, to be enveloped and kept and kept within certain fields or premises or conditions so that it does not go array and astray and becomes a shaitan. In Islam, we should talk not about the freedom of the nafs, but the freedom of the ruh, the freedom of the qalb from the nafs, freedom from the self, of the heart, of the soul, of the intellect, of the mind, and consequently of our words and actions. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of the first traits and, and, and defining characteristics of Islam that we shall lose by we abandoning them is haya. And haya is that noble feeling of, of feeling uncomfortable in the face of offending the other. with a word, with a look, with an action. That's why we, we feel uncomfortable inside. That's why we say, oh, he has so much haya that, or she has so much haya that when they are in front of somebody, they speak something, their complexion turns red. That's the practical external uh, manifestation of haya. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had more haya than a young unmarried woman in her private quarters. He was described by his companions. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kana ashad haya'an min al-'adra fi khidriha. Al-'adra, the young woman in those days 14 centuries ago. A young unmarried woman who has never known man. So shy, so bashful, so innocent that she can't even look at a man in those good old days. He had more haya than, that, than such a young woman like that in her even private quarters. Imagine, like that and in her private quarters. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali. And therefore, haya from each other. Haya from each other. Haya from the elder, haya from the teacher. Haya from, most importantly, Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, istahyu min Allah haqq al-haya. Said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you must have haya from Allah very truly and very ardently. Haqq al-haya. We will not put ourselves in conditions which we know are not approved by Allah Azza wa Jal, and we feel so shy, not afraid. That's another maqam. 
No, there are those who worship Allah because they have haya from Allah. Some people don't have no haya, they are afraid. So like, I don't want to say more than that, like some animals who have to be treated, unfortunately, a little bit uh, toughly and roughly to refrain from doing evil and to do good. But there are those who know, alhamdulillah, it's not fear, but fear is recommended, is necessary from Allah. But it's not that only what moves them, haya from Allah. That Allah, that I know that Allah sees me. Ah. If you are my dear brother or my dear sister, if you are that, inshallah, good, trying to be your best, good practicing Muslim morally and so on, and you would want to do something negative, but then you see an elderly, beautiful, white-bearded saint. <laughs> oh, are you afraid of him? No. Oh, I can't do this in front of him. I can say that in front of him. Haya. Said Rasulullah, or it is said, said Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, depending on the Asaneed. Al Haya u Hassanun, Wala Kinnahu fin Nisa i Hassan. Haya is beautiful, whether man or woman, from man or from women. But from women, it is even more beautiful. Wallahi innahu lahaq. A woman with haya, wallahi, is more beautiful than a woman without haya. There are hearts that are skewed, that don't see properly. There are, there are hearts that are sound, that see ugliness in a man or a woman when they think they're exposing their beauty to such a heart, it is literally, wallahi ladhi la ilaha so ugly. al haya hasanun says Rasulullah Haya is beautiful. When Rasulullah saw so a man reprimanding his own brother, you know that famous hadith, reprimanding him that he was too, he had too much haya. And he told him, this haya of yours will take you nowhere that is in your professional life, in your endeavors, etc. So he was admonishing him to have less haya, be more aggressive. Be more aggressive. He says to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Dahu, leave him as he is. Al Hayau Kulluhu Khair. End of quote. Leave him. Haya, all of it is beautiful. We never have enough Haya. We have only less Haya. <laughs> And this character will be lifted, yes, from the world, but from Muslims. Is it happening? Yes, it has started a while ago. And oftentimes, sometimes, even in the fiqhi fatawi of some, these principles are not considered, are forgotten. Something may be lawful, but if it violates the norm of haya, it shouldn't be. As long as it is not wajib or haram. If it violates the norm of haya, it must not be allowed. And second, he said, al-amana, trustworthiness. To be a person who is ma'moon, who is Amin? You all know the word Amin. 
Rasulullah was the epitome of a man. Al-Amin, As-Sadiq Al-Amin, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wa Alayhi Wa Sallam. And our deen, the Qur'an and the Sunnah are prolific about emphasizing haya and amana. And amana. To the extent that a mu'min, the word iman, mu'min, has in it a derivation of amn. An aman. A mu'min is a mu'min because those around him are in aman are in security, in tranquility, in peace, in safety from him or her or them. Of the first things that will be lifted is amana. We will lose our sense of trustworthiness. Ya Latif. I would say these are examples of you will witness momentous things. That haya is lifted, subhanAllah. And then he said in that hadith that I shared with you, and the last of the elements of Islam that shall remain and will be last lost is salah. Many things will be lost. And here speaking of our moral characteristics of our akhlaq as Muslims, and he called that of your deen, of the first thing that shall disappear in our deen from us is akhlaq. The essential khuluq of haya and amana. And he said, salah will be the last one to disappear. Because intermittently, some will be performing Salah still, and they have no faith. Yeah, لا إيمان لهم. And some narration said, have لا دين لهم. They have no religion, no deen of Islam. And in some riwayah, لا خلاق لهم, i.e. they have no share with Allah in the value of their salah. i.e. their salah is valueless. لا خلاق لهم, يعني لا نصيب لهم من تلك الصلاة مع الله. I have to say this next one. Said Rasulullah another well-known hadith, that islami That is the basic structure of Islam will be disentangled, will be dismantled gradually, one by one, one by one. Every time one urwa is dismantled, we, the Muslims, the rest, will be trying to hold fast to the next one. And then, with time, the next one will also go, will be gone. And then try to hold to the next one. Those who hold fast to their deen somehow, and the next one is gone. Is gone meaning what? The Muslims did it to themselves. Yes, what are the factors that would influence that? That's another discourse, external and internal, etc. But in other words, people will make those choices, he said. And the first of the major ura that would be dismantled, التي تنتقض, هي ماذا? Who knows? الحكم. Constitutionally, al-hukm is gone. Al-hukm bima anzal Allah, bi Allah, would be of the first major constitutional values that shall be dismantled. It has started long ago. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. Awwaluha, awwaluha naqadhan, al-hukm. وَآخِرُهَا He said, Salah, yes. And the last one to remain would be 
Salah, and in intermittently, as we said, there are those who will continue to, so to speak, perform Salah, but what Salah is it? Of what he said, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, in what Imam al-Tabarani, Shil Mu'ajam al-Kabir and others have related, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يتقارب الزمان وتزوى الأرض زيها End of quote. The hour will not come until time will contract. Excuse me. I.e., the intervals of time will draw nearer to each other. What we used to experience as a one hour might be experienced as a brief moment. What we would experience as one year might be a month. But let's continue and see what could this mean as some ulama have said ta'ala, in their scholarly commentaries on these things. وَتُزْوَى الْأَرْضُ زَيَّا in زَوَةِ الْأَرْضِ يعني it became also closer to each other. The parts of parcels of earth are drawn nearer to each other. What do you think this could mean? Pardon? Travel. And therefore he's speaking, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it seems, of again scientific and technological advancement where the means of transportation would be such that, or the means of doing other things, that which we would do in one year, we would do in a month. That which would cross of distance in one year, would cross in a month. That which cross in a month, would cross in a week. That which cross in a week, would cross in a day. That which cross or do in a day would do or cross in an hour. That which do or cross in an hour would do in a second. And if this is so, that means that which cross or do in a year we could do or cross in a second. Because he said, there is a text, I can read it to you. He says, until the, the, the year becomes like a month. A month becomes like a week, a week becomes like a day, a day becomes like an hour, an hour becomes like the, the moment it takes to burn a very dry leaf. And that is by the logic of uh, B implies uh, A implies B, B implies C, C implies D, therefore D implies A. And that means what would be done in a year could be done in a second. Transportation-wise, nanotechnology. It's incredible. Sometimes the events in nature for a certain reaction to take place takes place, how, how long does it? It could take years and years. But with a catalyst, it's spontaneous. You all know that, some of you, at least in your basic chemistry classes. SubhanAllah. So he said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, in what the Imam at Tirmidhi related and others, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يتقارب الزمان فتكون السنة كالشهر He said it literally فتكون السنة كالشهر ويكون الشهر كالجمعة وتكون الجمعة 
كاليوم ويكون اليوم كالساعة وتكون الساعة كاحتراق السعفة Like what I said a moment ago. لا تقوم الساعة what الإمام أحمد related the hour will not come upon us until حتى تظهر الفتن until tribulations and temptations and calamities will be more and more prevalent. Tadhar, be manifest, will be the order of the day, the order of life, fitan, tribulations. And that markets draw close to each other. Are you already used to it so that it doesn't impress you anymore? <laughs> I'm impressed because <laughs> I'm not a Google person. I don't uh, surf a lot. What? He said it's Larissa. You're here in what is this area? Pleasanton. Pleasanton? Huh? Pleasant may it be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pleasant turn, and then you buy something from Turkey. Yeah. From here. And it's delivered the next day or in two days or three days. Tataqarab al aswaq. La ilaha illallah. In one text, Rasulullah teaches Tataqarab al aswaq to such an extent also, and there is plenty of commerce. To the extent that also women will be doing commerce with their husbands, he said. And to the extent when a woman, a person, I'm sorry, a man, when he makes a deal, a business deal, a commerce deal, he says, I will not finalize it until I ask the opinion of X and Y in something somewhere very far. Hatta as'ala fulan min bani fulan. I will not complete the deal until, and the deal, of course, it's in those days, just if you waited from Mecca to Medina, you wait until you get their opinion, then it's probably a month later and the business is gone. So he must have meant, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, something on the spot. And therefore, alluding to the means of communication, that they would be so, as we know them, and Allah knows what's in the future, that these things will happen. الزمان, which you already commented on Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He also said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يكون السلام على المعرفة وحتى تتخذ المساجد طرقا فلا يسجد لله فيها يا الله he said, the hour will not come until these things happen. Until people greet one another only if they know one another. This, even Muslims will not say salam to one another. Muslims. If you don't know him, you don't say salam. This means this did not exist in our salaf, in our earlier days, in the days probably even of our grandparents. And now, I don't know her. Why should I say salam to her? The sisters, the brothers, I don't know him. Why should I say salam to him? He's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. He said it will develop such that we will not greet each other only if we know one another. Is it happening? Sadaqa Rasulullah. And remember, we learn these things so that we simply not develop a statistical knowledge of what's happening, but instead so that we are not parts of the statistics. So we are not parts of the 
negative statistics. We do make choices. And he says, and until وَحَتَّى تُتَّقَذَ الْمَسَاجِدُ طُرُقَ And time will come when masajid will be taken as pathways. I go to the masjid because it's my way, go in and out to where I'm going. Wallahi, I have seen that. فَلَا يُشْدَدُ لِلَّهِ فِيهَا And people will not perform salah in it. They just take it as pathways, some that means. In what Imam al-Nasai related, إِنَّ مِنْ أَشْرَاطِ السَّاعَةِ أَنْ يَفْشُوَ الْمَالِ Of the signs of the hour, there will be proliferation of wealth. And you're in the state of wealth, huh? State of money-making state in the area. Silicon Valley and, and all that which comes with it. But in the world overall, in the Muslim world in particular, there will be plenty of wealth. When in his time, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sometimes he himself and who he was, he goes out at night searching for maybe there is someone who sees him and invites him to have a bite to eat at home. You know some of those ahadith. The wealth, he says, will be abundant. حَتَّى يَفْشُوَ الْمَالِ وَيَكْثُرُ وَتَفْشُوَ التِّجَارَةِ As we said, and commerce will be also widespread. وَيَظْهَرَ الْقَلَمِ I want to pause here for a moment. And the pen will be manifest. يَظْهَر not only appears, but يَظْهَر يعني يَعْلُو ظَهَرَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ يعني عَلَى عَلَيْهِ غَلَبْ حَتَّى يَظْهَرَ الْقَلَمِ a pan will be manifest or will be sovereign. Zuhur al-qalam. And what is qalam? Not pen. What is now pen in modern times? Not only the pen. Your computers. Your supercomputers. Your so-called smartphones who are actually supercomputers. It writes. You dictate to it and it writes. It writes. It's your qalam. وَيَظْهَرَ الْقَلَمُ Which also means what? That in the world, literacy will be prevalent. People will know how to read and write prevalently. وَيَظْهَرَ الْقَلَمُ ويبيع الرجل البيع كما أشرت إليه سابقا ويبيع الرجل البيع فيقول أو فيقول لا حتى أستأمر تاجر بني فلان that text which I mentioned and that a person will make a commerce deal or business deal and he says no I will not complete it until I seek the opinion of X and Y who lives far سبحان الله Related, as I said, by Imam al-Nasai. Al-Imam al-Darimi, in his Musnad and Al-Imam Abu Nu'aym, in his Hilya, related the following. Inna Allah Ta'ala qal, that verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Abuthu al-ilma fi akhir al-zaman. I will spread ilm, knowledge, in the latter days, I will make it available to the extent حتى يعلمه الرجل والمرأة والعبد والحر والصغير والكبير. I will spread it 
so much so that everyone would have knowledge, would have information, would have data. Hmm? He says, man and women. He says, slave and free. He says, young and old. Man and woman, young and old, slave and free. All of them will have access to it. What does this say? The status of the world now and the means of communication to have access to knowledge, to data, to information. And that means speaking in this indirect way because these are prophecies. He's not going to start describing to the people 14 centuries ago about a computer or about AI uh, innovations. They are to be said in terms that are, uh, that are general and that have some sense uh, to those who are listening to it also directly but can be appreciated by those who will come later. So he says, until فَإِذَا فَعَلْتُ ذَلِكَ بِهِمْ And when that happens, I did that of them. In other words, I made knowledge available to them, including the knowledge of what? Of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the Fiqh. Do we, some people think they don't need now ulama. Go to Mr. Google. Mufti Google, they say, I'm learning these statements. Sheikh Google, Sheikh Google, Al Allama Google, Al Muhaddith Google, Al Hafiz Google. He is good in some issues, some, some issues, there are many errors when it comes to specific detailed knowledge. Yes, it has the speed of giving you data. So the point is, see, I will spread it until it becomes available in this way, subhanAllah. And of quote, when I have done that with them, then I shall snatch them by my right upon them. In other words, I've given them what they need to, of tools to know of me and to know of Islam, and to know of haram and halal, and to know of moral and immoral, I made it accessible and available. Wallahi al-Azim. There are now children who would have, have access to instantaneous information than scholars before who needed to work on it for years to collect that information. How long does it, did it take early scholars, for example, to find a hadith in the, um, in the books of hadith and makhtoutat of old? Sometimes it may take years. Now, tuck, in some few seconds, it tells you where all well, you, in every book you can find it, as long as those, of course, were entered into the program. The point is, فَإِذَا فَعَلْتُ ذَلِكَ بِهِمْ أَخَذْتُهُمْ بِحَقِّ عَلَيْهِمْ Then, that is, I punish them. Because they know and they don't practice. Because they know and they reject. Because they know and they choose to interpret it in the way the nafs wants it to be interpreted. فَإِذَا فَعَلْتُ ذَلِكَ بِهِمْ أَخَذْتُهُمْ بِحَقِّي عَلَيْهِمْ نسأل الله اللطف نسأل الله اللطف في مجرة به المقادير As I said, I'm going to be selective, and some things I share depending on where I am and who I am with. Uh, and alhamdulillah, how much innocence I see or, or how much um, challenge I see. As Rasulullah teaches us, we should address one another in ways that are plausible and, and um, 
bearable. Sometimes we're not ready to bear yet. Time will come when you, if one is sincere, if we bear what we get and we're sincere, then Allah gives us more to bear and to bear for our own good, to save us. In what the Imam Abu Ya'la in his Musnad and Tabarani Fil Awsat related said, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kayfa bikum ayyuhan nas? And please, I repeat, we're learning these things because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and he said that not to hurt us if we are in the statistics, but if we are believers, to wake us up. Oh my God. I am actually doing that. Ya Allah, help me repent. Help me reform. Help me change. Not of those who accuse Allah and His Rasul when things don't go their way. Oh, this cannot be. This cannot be. Why? Because it doesn't sound right to me. But that's not faith. That's not religion. That's going shopping in the markets. Deen means when God speaks, and we know that God speaks, if we do, then no matter what it feels, we are ibad of Allah Azza wa Jal. We are meant to be loving, surrendering creatures to the divine in the way we think, in the way we process, in the way we feel, in the way we speak, in the way we do, in the way we agree, in the way we disagree. Nuslimu wajhana lillahi azza wa jal. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah. The consequences of that practically and aqul sami'na wa ata'na. So for us to learn, brothers and sisters, for us to change, because there are many things, as you already heard, that maybe we are ourselves violating of haya, as I said earlier, of amana, of hukum. We have to implore him for change and help us to change. In this text, he says, I repeat, كَيْفَ بِكُمْ أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ says he. In what state do you think you would be? كَيْفَ بِكُمْ بِمَعْنَى فِي أَيِّ حَالٍ تَكُونُونَ وَكَيْفَ يَكُونُ رَدُّكُمْ كَيْفَ بِكُمْ أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ How would you be, O oh, people, when إِذَا طَغَى نِسَاءُكُمْ وَفَسَقَ شَبَابُكُمْ قالوا يا رسول الله إن هذا لكائن قال نعم end of quote <coughs> these texts existed from 14 centuries ago the Huffal had memorized them and they were on the record he says how would you be when your women will become tyrannical طغى they exceed the boundaries and the limits, i.e. Islamically speaking, in their relationship of worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, in their relationship with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in their relationship socially, in their relationship with the world, with you, family-wise, etc. They would be ta'at. They would behave in ways that are excessive. i.e. the water went overboard and overflew. This is نساؤكم. And وفسق شبابكم. And when your youth will be wicked. فسق فسقت الحبة you know the, the seed broke out of the shell broke out of the shell we say فسقت الحبة so fisq is when 
we, we translate usually in English as wickedness, rebelliousness, etc. Fasaq, in other words, it, it breaks from the shell, from the norms. No more obedience to the parents. No more respect for the elder. No more haya. Aggressive in behavior, in action, in reaction, etc. Under these conditions when everybody is taught to be aggressively expressive, that would lead gradually to a sort of character building that is aggressive and therefore lack of hair and therefore fisk let me do what I want you don't have control over me and by laws nowadays in some lands and that are introduced in Muslim countries also you do not have the right to tell your minor kid to do certain things or not to do certain things contributing to the actual open fisk breaking from the shell in society. And he said that will happen, sallallahu alayhi wa So the companions said, Ya Rasulullah, will that really happen? These are the companions, men and women. He said, Ya Rasulullah, will that really happen? He said, Naam. Yes. May Allah save us, our children, our spouses, our families, our loved ones, our neighbors, and all Muslims from these yani, momentous events, as he mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and much more. I'm looking for one of them, the one more I'm going to close with, inshallah, because there are many, many of them. I'm just a selection. Uh, this is another terrible thing that happens. And he's speaking of in the world, but he's speaking to Muslims also. In what Imam al Tabarani and others related, Min Alam is Sah, Wa Ashratiha, and Yaktafi Rijalu bi Rijal, Wa Nisa'u bin Nisa. End of quote. Of the signs of the hour is that man will suffice themselves with man and women with women. that didn't exist in his time, in his environment, especially in the Arab environment, in the Muslim environment. But he says, you know, there's not just occasional things happening, that it means it will be prevalent. In Ashrat al-Sa'a, it's not that something out of the norm. Ashrat al-Sa'a, when things are described, means they become like normative. He speaks, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in other hadith, when time will come that people who are religious and practicing their deen and perform salah will be frowned upon. Wallahi al-Azim. Will be frowned upon, will be, you know, will be debased, will be rejected. Like you now, he says, you reject an adulterer. Time will come when there are those who will reject the musalli or the musalliya, right? Those who perform salah will be frowned upon. That is in Muslim societies, not only outside. 
عيسى صلى الله عليه وسلم ستكون فتن يفارق فيها الرجل أخاه وأباه تطير الفتنة في قلوب الرجال منهم إلى يوم القيامة حتى يعير الرجل فيها بصلاته كما تعير الزانية بزناها End of quote. Have you seen that already? After 9-11, many people say, no, I'm not a Muslim. I don't even pray. Wallahi, this happened in an airport. When they used to stop anybody unjustly, one fellow, miski, may Allah forgive us and forgive him. They stopped him kada marra. And he did everything to look, to look like him. And then at one point he says, he says, I told them, why do you keep doing that to me? I don't even pray. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Because some become afraid, became afraid to pray. Because they are frowned upon, because they are hurt, because they are underscored. Well, there is a lot more to be shared, but uh, the intent behind this, my dear brothers and sisters, for myself first and then you, to put in perspective what is happening in this world. And yes, there are texts about what is happening in the Middle East. But I thought at this moment, those things you probably have heard some of it, of it, some about it, but this perhaps you didn't. To put all things in perspective, I shared, I, I prefer to share these texts or the likes of these texts so that we don't, we should stop sometimes simply and pointing the finger at the other who is hurting us, which is true. We're hurt by the others. That's a fact and we have to deal with it. But not to forget what we are causing to ourselves. And this text is all about we doing things. And oftentimes, we don't pay enough attention to them. We belittle them. And yet, big changes come through what? Incremental changes, smaller changes, little by little. Little by little, until when it becomes big, it's too late to change it because we've gotten used to it already, gradually. And I mention this so that I remind myself first and implore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me not be one of those negative, harmful statistics. Nasallallah al latif al alim al kareem al halim الذي أمره إذا أراد شيئا إنما يقول له كن فيكون أن يحفظنا بما يحفظ به عباده الصالحين أن يقول للخير فينا كن فيكون وأن يقول للشر فينا قف ودع يا رب يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أحببنا وحاببنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم انصرنا وانصر بنا واجعلنا هادين مهديين لا ضالين ولا مضلين لا ظالمين ولا باغين ولا طاغين ولا عادين يا رب يا ارحم الراحمين يا اكرم الاكرمين may Allah bless you all my dear brothers and sisters may Allah bless you Sayyidina Shaykh may Allah bless you Sayyidina Imam may Allah bless you all inshallah ta'ala and please forgive me for anything that I have said or expressed that was inappropriate please forgive me and I seek Allah's forgiveness and I seek refuge in him that I remind you of him and yet myself forget him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.